Yes, family, blessed love. Give thanks for your presence with us. Glorify the life given, the keep of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. I definitely welcome you to another edition of Chalice Talk. This is the program where we're sitting and supping and we blaze the chalwa, touching the long shank today and definitely carry it to another height. In fact, I want to touch a bit upon the Battle of Adowa. I know right now we are like what? We are like, like the 11th or also day of March and the Battle of Adowa from since the 1st of March. But you know, we didn't touch it as yet. So we're going to look into that this evening. And actually, I'm going to be running a video for you right now. A video that it appears to me as if they took the full um, documentary off of the YouTube and you could hardly find the little pieces. And I have a piece of the first part of the video I want to run today. It is one of the Amharic versions of the Battle of Adawa. Um, and it was done by, what's the man's name there, Princess um, Haile uh, um, Germia. That's how you pronounce his name, the brother that did. Haile Garima. Uh, Haile Garima. Gar Gar Garima. Give thanks, Honorable Princess Akesha Mene, for such information. So when I'm going to light up the child one. You're going to love it. For those of you who've never seen it, you're going to love it. The vast majority of it is in Amharic, but we're not watching that. It's the energy and the spirit we're, work, we, we, we're working with, especially at this time of the fasting and praying. As most of you know, I'm, I'm breaking my fast at the, the down setting of the sun and at the recording of this, it has not been, the Sabbath has not come in as yet. We usually record the chalice talk before the Sabbath comes in and definitely by the Sabbath, you should be able to view it. Now, before we go into that video, let me just remind you of Amenta. That's next Wednesday, the 16th of March. Amenta is going to be a wonderful sit down, a wonderful lecture. We are going to be talking about the journey through the underworld. And it's all about the Lenten period. Eh? It's all about the 40 days and 40 nights. Eh? It's all about the crucifixion and the resurrection eh? year of the Messiah and the whole science of it and what it is all about. So I'm looking forward to, to, to your presence. It's an online lecture. You know, it's going to be one of the free online lectures. So definitely, I am looking forward uh, to your presence uh, with us. Now, before we go into the Adawa video, let me just remind you that the Spring Equinox Virtual Edition is still here. Now, remember, it's just, an, uh, let me see what, today's the 11th or 10th, 11th, somewhere thereabouts. Yeah, today's the 11th. Now, now, remember the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, thereabouts, that is when the nature itself has that balance of what is known as the equinox. And we're talking about the spring equinox, and we're talking about the virtual edition. So family, those of you who are not coming down to Antigua with Dadley Anu to, to hike with us to Green Castle Hill, of course, you know, the next best thing is to join us on the virtual edition. And all you have to do is just sit at home. <laughs> Basically, that's all you have to do. Sit at home. Make sure you have your snacks. Make sure you have your meds. Make sure you have your chalice. Make sure you have everything you need. And just join us. Number one is going to be the evening hike. That's going to be Sunday the 20th. That's going to be the afternoon hike. We're going to watch the sunset. It's going to be like a festive activity. And trust me, you're going to be amongst the megaliths and the alignment of the stars. And of course, you're going to get the lecture from myself and some of our historians that are going to be with us. Then the next day, the very next day, it is the cannabis tour and the chalice talk, everything in one. So we're going to be carrying you to several ganja fields. Let me tell you straight. We will be carrying you to several ganja fields and you're going to be seeing all the different types of cannabis that is being grown right here in Antigua. Now police can't lock nobody up. Eh? I'm just telling you how the thing goes. So I told you you should have been here. Next time, eh? make sure you come in June. Make sure you set yourself for June to be here. Okay, but for now, you can still be here virtually. Good. And then the day after the cannabis tour and the chalice talk, eh? that's going to be a wonderful day. The only regret is you're going to be watching all the sense and the buds and say, wow, I wish I could even just touch it. <laughs> and then when we hit the chalice talk, we're going to have some of the priests 
with us and some of the, the bingy man and, and the empresses with us and chalice will be blazing and we will be reasoning. That's going to be a wonderful session. And then, of course, the Tuesday, which is the 22nd, that's going to be a wonderful day. That's going to be the morning hike. Yes, we're returning to Greencastle Hill. We we will be showing you a, diff, a, a different aspect of Greencastle Hill. Because remember, Greencastle Hill is extremely, extremely vast, eh? extremely vast and, and just filled with me megaliths, countless of megaliths. This beautiful poster that the Honorable Prince Almasi designed, if you look into the mystics, you can see some of the rocks here at the eternal city that align with the movements of the heavens. So family is going to be a wonderful sit down. Those of you who may be new to this and may not know that much about Greencastle Hill, and I did promise to do a, a, a lecture on it, but what I could advise you, visit the website. Of course, you know, the website is priestisaacinstitute.com. Visit the website. And when you visit the website, just go to the area marked shop. And then when you scroll in, you could get a copy of the book, Anu, Anu Ancient and Modern. Definitely, when you get Anu Ancient and Modern, you definitely have all the idea or, or get all the information you need to know as it relates to the, the Green Castle Hill. In fact, let me just show you. So this is the website here. You go to shop and then you scroll down. It's really the store. Here's the book, Anu, Ancient and Modern. Definitely wonderful book. You definitely check it out and get more information as it relates to Green Castle Hill. So looking forward you know, for your presence with us, even if it is virtually, I'm still looking forward to your, you know, for you to be with us, join us specifically. And all you have to do is to contact us via the email, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. That's priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. And let us know you would like to purchase your virtual ticket for the virtual edition of the Spring Equinox. And so said, and so will be done. Okay, family, I hope you have a chalice ready. And definitely we will be observing this video here. It's called the Battle of Adowa. As I said, the vast majority of it is in Amharic. It's only about, well, this is just a piece of it. I can't, you can't find the whole, you know, on the internet for sure, you know. But this is a video that we have, uh, even before the days of the internet, this is, uh, if you notice, you know, you'd hear me speak about a lot of the videos you see on the internet, especially about the emperor in Ethiopia and Ethiopian, these things. Even before YouTube, we had a lot of these things on video cassettes. So, so the video of Idi Amin, the documentary that they don't want nobody to see on YouTube. Every day somebody put up a video about Idi Amin, telling all kinds of lies about him. But the one that talks the truth, you, you put it up, they pull it down. Can you imagine that? Sick. But anyway. Let us bless up the chalice. This is going to be a wonderful chalice talk. Fasting and praying, Menelik the second, King Book and Bible Way, King Emmanuel the seventh. Adonai God, Cha Rastafari, Lord of the Sabbath. Mm. As we enter, eh? give thanks for your presence with us. Give thanks for the Sabbath day. And we give thanks continually for 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. Yes, the Battle of Adawa. It's just going to take in a few minutes, eh? Then we reason. That's the far right. Adwa. 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 Ta-da! 
ዛሬ ከፈለክ ምን ነው ቀደም ብለ አትመጣም ነበር ለራስ የድ ብልክልቁ ወጦብኝ በጨክልነትና በርጅና ማከድል የዋጀኩ ለምጣሌ ዳለው ቀርቶ ታሪክ ለነግረህ ታሪክ ምትፈልግ ኑሮስ ቀደም ብለ በመጣ ነበር በቀድሞው ዘመን አንድ ዘንዶ ከሰው መንደሩ ዘንዶ ገብቶ መንደርተኛው በግብር መከራ ሲያበላ ሲያድስ ሰቃይ ጀግና በአገር አይጠፋም አይደለም ያንን የተሰቃየውን መንደርተኛው ሁሉ ሰብስቦ እንጨት ቁረጡ አላችሁ ታዲያ በዚያው ሁሉ የተቆረጠ እንጨት ዘንዶ የሚኖርበትን ዋሻ ዙሪያውን ጠው አለና አንድ ማምለጫ መንገድ እንደ መስኖ ከፍቶ ዙሪያውን የታጠረውን እንጨት እሳት ልቀቁበት አላችሁ ጀግና ሆየ የጦር ልብሱ ልብሶ ከፈረቱ ላይ ቆም ብሎ ሲጠብቀው ያ መናጢ ዘንዶ ከንቅልፉ ምንን ብሎ ሲነሳ በሳ ተገሞራ ተከቧል ነብስ የናው ጀኝ ብሎ ጀግናው ከፍቶ በተወለጥ ማምለጫ እየተምሸቀ እየገ ሲመጣ ፊት ለፊቱ ጀግናው የጋሻውን መክቶ ያን ጦር እየሰበጠ ያገኘውና ይፈጣጣል መናጢ ዘንዶ ያንን ጀግና ሊውት አፉ በርክዶ ሲወረወር ያ ጀግና ተካክሎ ጦሩን ሲሰብክበት ግዜ ጦሩላን ቃውን ተቆጋብ Kiras Girogis Saint George the Georges Kiras Girogis Following the dragon saving the damsel Salaji that comes alive in the gifts and the gas the king of kings better believe it paintings of the battle listen well well i'm saying listen but maybe i should say read for those who may not understand that i'm harry you know it's clearly showing you that during the time of the battle of adawa saint george joined the battle the battle is in motion this is what the youth is saying you see the youth the battle is in motion keros girogis or saint john george pardon me also campaigned with them this is deep eh? saint george joins the battle just like when they speak of in in zephaniah is that the ark comes out and fights with them before the battle started before the battle started the emperor pledged that's menelik the second to build a church if kiros gerogis or saint george helped him to win the battle now kiros georges i hear people say that all the time no disrespect him. but you could even hear if you listen good to the youths the youths um vocabulary you hear him also specifically say gerogis this is beautiful ተጀምሮ በጀመሪያ ሳይጀመር በፊት ጣሊያኖች ከአራሳ ካራታሂ ቅዱስ ጊዮርጊስ ቤተክርስቲያን አሰራለው ብሏል ካሰሩ 
በኋላ በማሰራታቸው ላይ ያሉ ሞቶች ጊጫይቱ አስጠረሸውታል ቅዱስ ጊዮርጊስ ማለትም ከነሱ ጋር አብሮ ዘምቷል ማለት ነው So he's saying that, you know, that while the building, while building the church, he passed, that is Menelik II, and Empress Taitu completed it. And he's showing you that means Kiddos Gerugis or St. George took a part in the actual war. የዛሬ 100 አመት በኢትዮጵያና በኢጣሊያን የቅኝ ግዛት መንግስት ስለተደረገው ጦርነት ባጼ ምንሊክ ዘመነ መንግስት ይህን የጦርነት ድል የሚያሳይ ማስታወሻ የምስል ታሪክ ሲመለከቱ ሳይ ትዚያለኝ እኔም በልጅነቴ በተላዩ ግዚያቶች ስለተፈጸሙት የሀገር ገጸ ታሪኮች ሲወርድ ሲዋረድ በመጣው የውዳሴና የዋዜማ የታሪክ ማስተላለፊያ ስልት በተለይም በኪነ ጥበብ በተረት በእንቆቅልሽ በቀራርቶ በፉከራ በየጊዜው እየተፈራረቁ ከልጅነት ወደ ወጣትነት ዘመን አሸጋግረውኛል So that's the narrator of the film, obviously. The very same, uh, highly, the Rima. Am I correct? To all the bad the kubat, bezich wonder tabla be mutt a route and tawi katama. Adwalai bata darrago, wugya. የኢትዮጵያውያን ድልን መጎናጸፍ በአንድ ወቅት በነበርኩበት ሁኔታ በገዛ ህዝቦቼ እምነት ተስኖኝ አባቴን እንዲህስል ጠየቁት አድዋ ላይ በተደረገው ጦርነት በእውነት ኢትዮጵያውያን ፈረንጆችን አሸንፈው ነው ወይስ በውሸት ላይ የተመሰረተ የኩራት መንፈስ ነው በየ Well, well now now you know I, i'm not sure if maybe you know you you are getting all what the good brother is now here saying so because basically this is just the introduction of the documentary so he's explaining you know he's observing the youths and the youths them accounting the battle on the, the painting because all the artwork that you were looking at there a moment ago the artwork specifically is that of the battle of adowa and again we mentioned that saint george entered the battle on the side of the ethiopians of course to assist them and and menelik already pledged that he will build a church for for keros girgis if they won the war it is said that of course 1913 menelik the second made a step out and Empress Taitu made sure that the Church of Saint George was built. Give thanks, and of course, we we know that the, the Emperor himself coronated in the Church of Saint George. In fact, there was a special ceremony when the Emperor returned to Ethiopia. When they returned the Tabat, the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabat specifically back to the the church of saint george i mean it's a lot of high vibes because haile selassie is representing or 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 or, or saint george i should say you know is a representation of haile selassie if that's the right way to put it you know some may argue that saint george slew the dragon of the dragon is mythology now there you go that's a good example you know saint george slew the dragon is mythology okay I would more agree with it uh, being, you know, some level of myth or legend, whatever. But the myth must come to reality. So all the myths come to reality. All the esoteric stories come alive. The, their prophecies, it's just another term for prophecy. 
you know, the mythological story with its esoteric meaning still comes to life in historical events. That's real. So Haile Selassie is the Kedas Girogis. He is the Saint George that did slew the dragon Italy. You know, understand the spirit of Saint George came into Menelik II, Rasmo Kenin, Empress Taitu, the Ethiopian warriors when they licked down the Italian government there. You know, so so we give thanks for that energy there. And the, the narrator now is recounting, even as a youth, he remember asking his father about the Battle of Adawa. And if the Ethiopians really defeated the white men at the Battle of Adawa. And of course, his father had to show him exactly what was really going on. He even said he remembered as a, as a youth, the songs and the chants, the war chants. And, and these different things he was recounting from the ancient ones when he was a child. And this documentary was done a hundred years after the Battle of Adawa. So this would be 1996, because the Battle of Adawa, for those who may not know, is 1896, uh, uh, the 1st of March, is really where it all went down. So as I said, let us go through just a bit more of this. I want to reach to the Battle of Dogali where even remember we did the whole program on Dogali. You, you would hear it on radio and showing that when we went into battle in Dogali, the red was up, the red, gold and green during the time of Dogali. But remember, we already gone through that. You know, not no argument, not no talk of war with nobody. And you know, I mean, the outlook at these different things, that's not the point. We did a whole program on the banners of, 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 of uh, the Ethiopian flag and its history. We did a whole program on that. And we showed even before it was a flag, 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 it was actually less the three colors, like three triangles. That's where that whole science comes from, is from Ethiopia. And it was in the order of the rainbow, the red, gold, and green. And um, factually, during the time of Dogali, which did precede Adawa, we, we had the red, gold, and green as our banner, not because we went into war. That It is because of that you would hear some people say, we rise the red up when we go into war. I always wondered about that, especially coming into RAS, because some, sometimes this is where you got to do your own research. And when I researched and studied good, I said, but no, no. When they go into war, the banner still how the banner is. You know, some of you would see some Ethiopian artwork where you have the red, the green and the gold during the time of war too, you know, and, and but the point is that the, it's not a war thing. In Dogali, yes, the red was up, gold and green, but it was so even prior to that, somewhere from Dogali to the time of Adawa, that is where you got that conversion of the flag. And that's just reality, you know, there's no need for nobody to argue about it. And you see, ones would be upset with uh, Bobo Shanti and King Emmanuel when they talk about the, the Victorian era, which is that same time, and the turning down of the flag, you know, but because you never get that history nowhere else, because none of your professors can tell you about that. None of your great scholars that have been to Kemet and Ethiopia 52 times know anything about that. But the old, the old, the old Rastaman, you know I mean, King Emmanuel, tell you, yeah, man, Victoria have nothing to do with that, man. Man get, man get um, um, criticized and ostracized for talking them things. How dare you say that? You know, you know. And more times I think even I and I as Boba Shanti need to even, um, um, you know, offer ourselves more historically with exactly what happened there. Because something happened from the, I'm telling you, historically, that mega making it up, during the Battle of Dogali, it was the red, gold, and green. And prior to that, that's just a fact. That's, as I said, we cover that in depth and we do whole programs on that. And we can clearly see with the evidence that from the time of um, Adawa during that time, and we, uh, um, during that time, uh, the, 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 the state banner was the green, gold, and red. It's just like even now, the, it's still green, gold, and red, but it's not the same exact green, gold, and red. There's something inside of it, a, a blue interlaced five-point star. Then there was a time when it was just green, gold, and red without anything at all in it. 
and then there was the green, gold, and red with the imperial line in it. And, and so it has a history. It's not like no one making anything up. It's just reality. So, so even all of that going back to the time of Dogali, which I want to touch upon there in a moment. So just let's tiger with this. Let us have this scholarly. You know, this is why I always say this is not entertainment. This is knowledge. And um, although the transcript or the caption may not be as clear as clear can be, sometimes it's behind even a white background and it's in white, just showing you. But um, it's not everything we will be definitely going through, but we're just holding the vibes, you know, sparking ourselves more on the Battle of Ottawa. So let's continue. <laughs> You hear that right away. This is a song. Them is uh, what you would call it, uh, native songs being sung here. Post spirits summon each other from here and everywhere. You hear who summon summoning each other spirits. Congregated spirits of the dead. This is Ethiopians singing here. Ancestors <laughs> gathered to counsel the worldly souls of the living. That's a, that's some deep deep stuff, and it shows you. you know, remember, these are Christian people, and that is why we say, you know, you can't really confuse Ethiopian so-called Christianity with Roman Catholicism there, let's put it that way. You have to remember from even three, uh, uh, 351 AD at the, uh, uh, the Council of Chaldea, 451 AD at the Council of Chaldea, Rome and Ethiopia separated themselves. Well, Ethiopia separated itself from Rome over the concept of the nature of Christ. Just imagine that, over the concept of the nature of Christ. That's why Rome separated itself. Uh, Ethiopia separated itself from Rome. Rome was pushing the diophysite. And Ethiopia was showing you, well, man, we rocking with the Akhenaten vibes. The what? The ancient Abraham vibes. What do you mean? The monophysite vibes, the, the oneness of God vibes, you know, monotheism vibes, the oneness of the God, the spirit and the physical man is God in flesh. That is what we're rocking with, God in flesh. Same thing the Black Christ teaches. us. If, if, if a man teaches you that Christ, just like you see in the book of John, if a man teaches you that, teaches you that Christ come not in flesh, it's of the devil. But he that teaches that Christ come in flesh, like look him there as a man of God, you know. So the concept of God in flesh is a very, very important and serious thing, you know. So even all here, when you even check in this out there, the spirits of the dead come to counsel the living. That's what happens, you know, even chalice talk, man. When you see me blaze the chalice and the spirit rising is the spirit come to counsel, you know, our ancestors come and dwell in us. And we utter words of right and think right things and do right things when the spirits of the ancestors come and counsel us. So I'm just showing you the oneness of the African type of tradition. You don't hear other levels of Christianity talking about them things here. This almost sounds like some voodoo thing or something talking about the spirit of the dead <laughs> coming to counsel you. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> some ghost story you're bringing up here. Yeah, but I'm just trying to show you, but you'll find that in all African traditions, you find that kind of thing. You may not necessarily dig up that in Christianity. It may be there, but it's disguised as, you know, the angels came and spoke and the spirit of the Lord and all of that, you know. Them man in Africa. This is Ethiopia talking here. You know. This is Ethiopian Christian tradition. Is a song the man singing here. I mean, not somebody just talking off of his head. He's singing it. 
the spirits gather themselves together, the spirits of the dead, to come and counsel the living. And I'm just belaboring the point to show the audience with understanding, you know, how, how, how the Africans think in general. So when you see like Ethiopia, the father of the Asian Christianity, eh? don't try to make it sound like, well, Ethiopia came after the Coptic Egypt is the same one thing. But because of division today, they try to make it look different. Trust me, it's the same one thing. Check it out. Bazianu worked at Gavi Malsono Baltaye Nyaktacha Abate and Dizil Malasaling Baduat or Net Lai Abzanyo Chu Yenyasoch Logia in a Baracho or Gasha Gorade Nabber Arvanyoch Bachalama Babado Gracho Yaduan Tarara Kulkulatun, Yetan Kabakabu or Dow, Yefokaru, Yedanafu, Balacho Sultan Nahail, Batorna Bagorade Alatin, Sigat Mut, Yetalant Yit Bamatacho Kutter, Zaraf Yemen Tunkustano Bak, Yalu, Sonetachon Yakaku, Yedabasu Dam Lavso, Beazut Gorade. Yes, in tune. I, I wonder if you're gathering what is being said here. They're showing you specifically, or oh, he's saying that according to what his father showed him in the tradition, that through the same chanting and singing and war songs, when they went on the battlefield, Anytime the Italian bullets would hit them, they would say, what, like, what flea is this that has touched us? And it would not stop them because they were so in a trance. They were so caught up in the, the theater of war and the spirit of the ancestors were with them. Hear what he said, eh? even though at the time it may have seen a bit unbelievable, but this is what my father said to me, that on the battlefield, bullets flying, when they hit them, what flea is this? So, Beazut Gorade, Yesintun, Talian, Watadar Angat, Korto, Korto, he said they just dressed their wounds and went on to 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 continue to behead the Italians. And you must say, you know, because even the emperor now, Haile Selassie the first. Remember, even as Rassi coming in, man, they said, boy, when the emperor was at the battlefield, bullets flying and bombs after the emperor, and man uses cape and you know. And in that and and in that time, a lot of us will hold on to that, like, yeah, man, wow, the king powerful. You know what I mean? Now I'm one that tell you, I, I honestly believe it from my heart that we does kind of add things to history. Yeah, we does, we do that. You know, I, I did a whole program on that. Um, I brought up that same situation of the king on the battlefield and bullets and so and but I, I think that program was mainly about when they said he put his foot on the bomb and and how that happened which I mean the picture clearly shows you but um, you know the, that, that, that whole story of how Haile Selassie put his foot on the bomb and it didn't explode how we got it first. And that's just a fact. Most Ras would know. The first time they hear about this maybe from another Ras is that it, it shows the, 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 you know, the, the king, the, the bomb dropping in, wherever the bomb dropped, because some people say in the palace ground, which I don't, that's not the case. But some drop and the king went and put his foot on the bomb 
And because of that, it didn't explode. You would even hear it in certain songs, reggae songs, etc. Now, coming to realize that, yes, it is a set of bombs that drop in, in, in that vicinity there. That did not explode. But what happened is that the emperor called for the bombs then to, to the, the, yeah, the bombs to be piled up together and called for the, I think it's a Time Magazine photographer to come and take the picture. Now, it may not sound as dramatic as the other thing, but that's a serious thing to do. Ones were scared, you know, to prove that ones were scared. The, the photographer, remember back in those days, you were dealing with um, gunpowder to, 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 to take a picture. So he would have to catch his match or whatever he has there and throw it on the, the gunpowder and poof, the light and click, take the picture. And he was so afraid that they say when the picture was taken, when he lighted it and poof, while the camera taking the picture, you know, you know how easy it is to take a picture or how quick a picture is taken. The photographer running away because he was so scared. And that's to show you, that's to show you how tense that situation had to be. It is only because the Ethiopian soldiers around the king were so brave that they would stand up there, but I could imagine everybody else backing off. So the reality is understanding that story, the reality is it's, it's, it, it, is a, it is a very powerful event, how the king piled up and the picture was taken. It, it, and it was a dangerous thing to do. It was, you know, it's not, the jump over the fence and he put his foot on the bum like a superhero thing, which is how we really got it. I know nothing you can attest to that. You know. So we don't have to spice it up. Now I'm saying that to come back to on the battlefield now. Again, coming into Rastafari. Hear me good, eh? Again, coming into Rastafari. You'd always hear, yeah, man, when the emperor on the battlefield enough gunshot and so hit the king and the king just uses his cabba. Escape and just pop, 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 bullets fly. Remember they said that about um, Nani eh? in Jamaica. How she catch bullets with her bottom and fling them away and hit back people. That's what they say. Eh? She have a pot boiling without no fire. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying now, those of us as Ras, enough Ras, we say, well, look, I don't believe the king was on no battlefield and no bullet hit the king and he knocked them off. Man, does just add too much to this thing. Man, I was trying to fix up the thing. Stop trying to fix up the thing. I agree. Man, does fix up the thing. But listen to this account here. This is not no Rasta man account here. The narrator of this video here, the respected um, 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 documentary maker, what's the right term there? Uh, uh, filmmaker, filmmaker, yeah, and, and, and we are filmmakers and we can't think. <laughs> the respected filmmaker, Haile, what's his name again? Gerima. Haile Gerima, you know what I mean? Ethiopian, and he's just giving you an account of what his father said, and what his father said is, is not nothing new to the Ethiopians. And what is his father saying? When they were on the backfield, during the time of Adawa, when bullets would hit them, they would say, what flea is this? Remember the king is four years old now. This ain't got nothing to do with he now, the emperor. And he, the emperor, come to the point where you hear the same thing about him. So maybe it's not exaggeration. Then. Because even the song clearly saying that spirits come in to come and talk with the living to assist them in battle. Man firing shot at you, blah, 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 when you just walk up to him and throw the gun down and behead him. Man, but that's what the man say here, song. A song. 
<laughs> so what kind of powers the Ethiopians have there? And even when Haile Selassie on the battlefield, even though the, the war was in that time a more modern war than this war, don't we know that the emperor understood that when he was four years old, man was on the battlefield and he was there too. There are pictures of the emperor at, at the Battle of Adawa during that time with, um, with uh, what do you want, what do you call it? With guards around him, flanking him on the left and on the right with guns. And he have on that gallon hat, that big gallon hat. I'm sure many of you would have seen that picture there. So at the same time now, at the Battle of Adawa, when you understand what is taking place there, that's the same time at about the age of four years old, as I said, the emperor at that time, even in all humility and all understanding, you know, never really, uh, never really even that, even, even in that vibes, even in that position there, you know, uh, 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 I would not say be on the field, like on the field, but at the same time, even at that age, you know, he is very brilliant and can take in a lot of knowledge and information and inspiration that is coming from the elders. So with this level of history being taught, that hey, on the Battle of Adawa field, and even before that, even during the time of Dogali, Man, the point I'm making is that this is a natural thing in Africa. This is a natural thing amongst the Ethiopians. It's nothing really spooky. Eh? When you see the spirit get into them, eh? you can stab man with knife and so and it break you. Know? Come on, man. What was that um, Kung Fu movie we watching there with that man? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jason Scottley. Jason Scottley. Uh, uh, I'm sure many of you have seen the video there when he went to Song Hill amongst the Shaolin, the Shaolin, yeah. Shaolin monastery to train to be a Shaolin master. You know, see, them fellas laying down their nails and taking iron steel and breaking it in their head. This is not no magic trick, you know. You know it. Bricks and um, uh, marble slabs on the belly and taking a sledgehammer and bam, breaking it in and, you know, and, and, and all sorts of things, breaking wood and so in the back and on the arm but because of the power of chi, because of the power of, you know, uh, being able to concentrate that, that energy force into a specific point, because of all of that, they're not damaged, they're not hurt, you know, nothing affects them because they have the ability to concentrate, again, that chi force, that chi energy. So some of these people, you could hit them with a brick, Bam, the brick will break in their chest and it doesn't affect them. You could lick them with steel in their head. It will bend and break and it will not affect them. Not because they had made from steel and to some degree they do practice hitting their head against things so their head get hard. But it needs more than just practicing to hit your head against things so your head get hard. You also have to have a will inside of you. You have to have a certain spirit inside of you. Them brothers fast for weeks and, and meditate and penetrate and, and oh, I'm sure some of them can see through walls. That's the fire. To be able to take them kind of blows. So this is not no miracle neither. It is something that literally can happen. The song didn't say that they didn't get affected by the bullet. Here the song say they, 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 they dress their own wounds with their own blood. So the bullet hit them. But they're in such a spirit that is not like it licked them down or can even kill them, maim them or anything. Enough man running for their life and get shot. And don't even know they get shot in their leg. And they run and they run and they run and they run. Down the valley, up the hill, down the valley. Swim over the bam, bam, bam. <sighs> And then they realize they get shot. And then they drop down. Then they drop down. It's the mind. It's the mind. So them Ethiopians well trained in the mind. And again, according to the song, the spirit. Spirits of the ancestor came to help them in war. And I'm only belaying this, belaboring this point so the audience can understand. This ain't no impossibility. This is ancient African science coming from Christian people. 
if you want to call it that. ለብዙ ሰዓት ከተዋጉ በኋላ በገዛ ደማቸው ሰክረው ይወድቃሉ የጠላትን ዘመናዊ ኃይል አለማወቃቸው የመንፈስ ሽብር ሳይደርስባቸው ድልን ሊጎናጸፉ ይችላል ብሎ ነገረኝ ከብዙ ጊዜም በኋላ አባቴ ከዚህ ዓለም ሲለየኝ የትንኩሽታው ተረት ምስጢሩ እየገባኝ ያጽናናኝ ይሄድ ጀመር አባቴ አቶ ገሪማ ሲወርድ ሲዋረድ በመጣውና በተረከበው የኪነ ጥበብ ስልት ታሪካዊ ምዕራፍ ያላቸውን ቲያትሮች ያዘጋጀ ለህዝብ በሚያቀርብበት ወቅት እኔም ከአባቴ ጋር አብሬ በቷንያንነት በመሰማራት የማስተዋወቂያ ሰሌዳውን ተሸክሜ አዋጁን ለህዝብ በማሰራጨት የተሳተፉበት ትምህርታዊ አስተዳደግ እስከ አሁን ድረስ የህወቴ ባላ ነው በየ በበኩሌ አመናለሁ ከራደውል ተብሎ የተሰየመውን ያባቴ የቲያትር መዘክር ባጼ ዮሐንስ ዘመነ መንግስት በጦር መሪያቸው በራስ አሉላ አማካኝነት ዶጋሌላ የተደረገውን ታላቁንና የመጀመሪያውን የኢትዮጵያንና የጣሊያን የቅኝ ግዛት ግጭት ይዘክራል እኔም የዶጋሌው ጦርነት ድልና ለጣሊያኖች ያስከተለው ዕፍረት ለአዱዋው ግጭት የመጀመሪያና ታላቅ ምክንያት ነው በየስ ለማመን ከመከራደውል ቲያትር አለፍ አለፍ በየ በመቆንጠር የዶጋሌውን ጦርነት እንደ መግቢያ በመውሰድ አቀርበዋለሁ በመርዝ ancient maps eh abyssinia ancient artwork family የሰው አቶን ቸልተኛ የባህር ወንበዴ የጠረፍ ቀማኛ የነጻነት መርገም የሀገር ደመኛ የሳምባ ነቀርታ የልብ መጋኛ እንደ ግራይ ጨካኝ እንደባብ ቂመኛ ጣሊያኖች በዶጋሌ ወደብ ባከማቹትና ባደራጁት የጦር ኃይል so basically what he's doing is just giving a call out for the people to understand that they are being invaded by the cruel devil ባንድ ወገን ንግድና ጓደኝነት መፈለጋቸውን ለማስመሰል በወደቡ አካባቢ የሚገኙትን ግለሰቦች ፊትፊት ያስቀደሙ በሌላ ወገን ደግሞ አገር ወረራቸውን ያስፋፉ ተቃዋሚ ሀገሬውን ይወጉ ያሰሩ እየገረፉና እየገደሉ የተረፈውን በራሳቸው ሃይማኖት እየጠመቁ መልሶም የገዛ ህዝቡን እንዲወጋ የጦር መሳሪያ ያስተጣጡ ኢትዮጵያን የቅኝ ግዛት ለማድረግ የመጡበትን አላማ ወቅቱ የነበሩት የኢትዮጵያ ንጉሰ ነገስት አጼ ዮሐንስ በጋሃድ ተገነዘቡ 
So that's the great King Johannes the Fourth, who went before Menelik the Second. So basically, he is showing you even from them times, the Italians even coming in the borders, trying to pretend to be friends. Because this is something that has been brewing it. And then they're trying to even adapt Ethiopians to, to join on their side, knowing that they are trying their best to take over the country. Mm -hmm. A nation is raided. Scorched with fire. Let me see the elders, them, they're singing. The patriots of Karen, warriors of Gura, defenders of Ginda, appearing at Haley, Masawa, sending trembles, nothings and nothings. Gusgusa Wordo, Dogali Lai, Italian Yik in Gizat, Wata Dorojgar, Elena, Tornet Akahedu. Now, they're showing you now that under Ras Alula, the war drums um, began to ring and they hurriedly charged at, uh, went at uh, Dogali. Now, according to some, this battle only took about five minutes and hundreds of Italians were killed. Dogali, all them time they invading all over Africa and Africa not getting no peace from Italy, Britain, Germany, etc. You know? And they're trying for years, not even years, centuries to hold on Ethiopia. And it's just not working. The massacre, the massacre at Dogali. So the elder man is saying, um, Ras, Ras Alula crushed all of the enemies. These are the ones. All of these are inscripted for the dead soldiers. Of course, at Dogali, at Dogali. And Dogali means Masaba. That, that single event in a matter of minutes, some facts here. Yeah. Hmm. If you think I make it up, in a matter of minutes, some 500 Italian soldiers lost their lives. Yes, in the shortest one history. There was um, a battle that lasted 45 minutes of between Britain and Baldash, Sultan Baldash in Zanzibar. Mm. And it lasted 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And they call that one the shortest one. The, the short, okay. So that means Dogali maybe last 46, 47. You see, the thing is, then I don't want to tell you about Dogali. You know what I mean? So it, it off the record books. You understand? Five minutes, eh? Five minutes. <laughs> A matter of minutes. If it was 45 minutes, he would say, in less than an hour. That's how you talk. But they say, 
in, in, in a matter of minutes, five minutes for the record say, give thanks. What's the name of that shortest war again? Britain and Baragash. Britain versus Baragash. Okay. And that took place where? Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Give that. See, see, see the monument here? That is Agli Eroi de Dogali. Mm. Yeah, North Italians dead man. And he's showing you all of the names here. And for these fallen uh, colonial, and for these fallen colonial soldiers, them here. In the city of Rome, commemorative statue was erected. African Makaramat Lazuti Europa. And he said, now that that created havoc and unrest for European imperialists. And that's my father alone marched at that battle. All right, I can't argue with him. So, so what what the what the uh, narrator is saying there is that because of the shame that came upon Italy at Dogali, the rest of their brothers were encouraging them to, hey, listen, man, you can't take that. So, you have to go and defend, you know, European pride. You have to go and do something again. And that is how they end up at Adawa. More blows again. Eh? That is how they end up at Adawa. More blows again. And I'm telling you, that is why they come back again in 1935. Because of the shame of Adawa. Because of the shame of Dogali. And bring more shame upon themselves again. When they come in um, upon Negus and Agas. Negus and Agas means specifically Emperor Haile Selassie I. So this man now is saying, my father has no march at the battle, I assume he mean, maybe from his family. Yeah. From my family, there were 12 of my uncles here that under Ras Alula, my own father, my own father fought all the way to meet, uh, meet Africa. It looked more like um, Meti, Metima. Zangizi Africa. Yes, yeah, Metima. I used to go Meti, Meti. Zangizi Africa. But I can't lie. But Kenya girl, Gajoj, but Sikai, but Kata no line of barrage. But then now he's really going to go into you know the whole suffocation and colonialism and so that came down in Africa and you can see some of these pictures highlighted showing you. The devil and the demon, you know what I mean? White imperialists looking like a snake, eh? Watch it in. And how they came on to Africa and really robbed them and raped. But it's good for us. This is why it's, you know, pride is important. Our lions have pride, <laughs> as Priest Dougie was saying. And you have to know your history to have an understanding of why you should be proud of yourself. And look how the Ethiopians Put against the force of Europe, Italy, specifically, several times. And even though, even though the defeat at Adawa was a crushing defeat, the defeat before that was even more swift or swifter and, 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 and you know. So if you notice, Dogali, Swift, Adawa took a little longer, and then the, the war in 35, okay, it lasts from 35 all the way to about 41. But in every case, Italy was crushed 
and Italy was defeated. And this is good history to understand. So a lot of what was taking place over Africa, and then pictures there of the hanging, that's not America. What was taking place in Africa, all over Africa, you would not see that taking place in Ethiopia, specifically because it was not colonial, uh, colonialized and, and conquered by any imperial government. What, what, who's that sister there again? Uh, Nehanda. That's Nehanda, eh? yes. Yeah, you may think it's a man, uh, as, a, as, a, as a, 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 a woman there. Yeah. Which, which country is this again? In Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Mm. So this is the British, eh? This is, this is, uh, she was a queen or was she just a warrior? Well, queen warriors. Yes, yes. Um, pronounce the name again for me. Nehanda. That's Nehanda family, Queen Nehanda. I know I think she was um, arrested with her brother. I don't know if this would be her brother here, but I think that's the case. And, and I know the Honorable Princess did a whole lecture um, of which Queen Nehanda was a part of that lecture. Is she in the book, The Kings and Queens of Africa? No, I don't think, no, no, no I don't think she's in there though. But, but that, that's just to show you what was taking place at the time. So family, listen, our history is very rich. And it is good that we, as, as Africans and, and those in the diaspora, knowledge is very important. You see as how we just went through this, this little program here and watching this documentary. And to some people, it may not be as exciting as, you know, talking about, some religious thing or trying to figure out something or debate with somebody else. Get too caught up in that. It is good to enrich your mind with good knowledge and good information, you know, because when you understand what is taking place here now, you can balance things off. You can see where Ethiopia was when, when the whole of Africa was being ravished. This is exactly what this is showing you. So when they stood up at Dogali again, that wasn't supposed to go like that. No, we were supposed to colonialize Ethiopia. All right, let's try again. They stand up at Adawa. Wait, again? This is not how this is supposed to go. We got to try again. And when they come in on the king of kings, say, well, look like we have it this time. Bam, no, it didn't work. Man, this, this, this ain't working. And, and with the mighty force of the King of Kings, then you had the United uh, States of Africa coming into reality. That's, what, that's really what was coming into reality. The United States of Africa that you even hear people like Marcus Masai Gavi and Brother Kwame Nkuma speak about. The United States of Africa, that is, that is really what the vision um, specifically was, the same way that uh, uh, Marcus Masai Gavi King Emmanuel, same vision of Emperor Haile Selassie I. So give thanks in our family for such meditation. Give thanks still celebrating the Battle of Adawa. Give thanks to the great Menelik the second, first of March. Remember the first of March also represents the, the Congress Foundation Formation Day, the 64th anniversary of such. That is what we are in right now. So we give thanks for these 60 and four years. Give thanks for the Sabbath day of rest that is, you know, well, should be upon ones who may be watching this at whatever time it is that they be, may be dwelling um, on it. Before we go in, let me just give you a little piece of this now. This is in English. Yeah, this is this this aspect of the video is in English. So um, let, let me see. This is going to talk about the Wachali. In the case of the Treaty of Wachali, Treaty. Here is a power, a foreign power, at the time a modern foreign power, which had been on extremely friendly terms with Minilik. Minilik throughout thought of himself as a friend of Italy and Italy as an ally of Ethiopia. Yeah. So he had every reason to enter an agreement with these people in good faith. Yeah. 
And of course, the treaty was not undertaken in good faith. And the person who was singularly suspicious of the good faith of the Italians was Empress Taitu from the start. And the disputed article very roughly said uh, in Dan Harek that the Italians would, upon request of the Ethiopian side, represent Ethiopian interests in Europe. On the Italian version, the article roughly had the provision that Italy had exclusive rights to represent Ethiopia in any foreign relations. This was, of course, a major limitation on Ethiopian sovereignty. I do saw it immediately. Minilik saw it thereafter. Both were utterly determined that whatever it took, they would not accept this version of the treaty. He prepared the diplomatic ground in a very painstaking way. And um, in the course of carrying out the diplomatic struggle, Menelik also made careful preparations for the war. <laughs> So as you could see there, the seed again coming forward, you know, basically. And again, that is the Treaty of Wachali, uh, another subject here we would have covered already. And of course, what happened there now is an agreement between the Italians and the Ethiopians under the, the leadership of Menelik the Great, Menelik II. And basically, one was in Italian and one was in Amharic. And the one in um, in the, the Italian, well, basically, let's say the one in Ethiopian first, says that Italy, of course, with the permission of Ethiopia, had the authority as such to represent Ethiopia um, on the foreign, foreign stage, international stage, pardon me, with Ethiopia's permission. But the Italian version, everything was the same except for that. In Italy, it says that Italy had exclusive rights to represent Ethiopia in the international arena. So these fellas believe that nobody in the palace of the king knew Italian or whatever it is that Empress Taito picked up. Maybe the spirits of the ancestors did not leave from, you know, they were, they were around at that time. And whatever it is, Empress Taito pick it up. And Empress Taito said, no, man, this ain't right. Read that. You think I don't know Italian? This is saying that you have exclusive rights to represent us. We don't want that. Our version says you can represent us. That's what we're working with here. But we have to give you permission of when and where and to who. What's going on here? That's the, the Treaty of Wachali. So that is one of the, the points that is used in the discussion when it shows that when you're proving that, uh, you know, we were really on our way to war because we could not trust the Italians. You know, they were definitely swindling us or trying to swindle us. So even from that time, the war gears were really being prepared. You know, that's again the Treaty of Wachali. So give thanks for Empress Taito. <laughs> with such gleaming eyes to pick that up. That, that alone, just picking that, picking that up alone would have given us history in the manner that we have history today. For example, if Italy got away with that, the history of Ethiopia as we know it would not be Ethiopia as we know it today. I don't know how far it would have reached, how far would Menelik reign reach? And what happened thereafter, the whole story would be different because Italy would have gone away with a signed agreement saying that they have all powers to run Ethiopia's business 
internationally. Story done. Menelik would have to have to diplomatically try to wrestle that back out of their hands. And however history would go, that's where it would go. So give thanks again for Empress Taitu for such genius and wisdom and foresight and, 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 and you know, the cunning meditation of a woman to can pick that up. Not wrong in being cunning, eh? as you could obviously see. To can pick that up even in a time of war. The enemy, man. That's why Haile Selassie referred to Rome when they attacked him. Our, um, I think he says, our, I, our ageless enemy are something of the sort. But our enemy, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, King Selassie Ja Rastafari. Remember, family, that. The radio and for your Sabbath meditation, especially going through the Lenten time. You know, if so if you're not in a tabernacle clapping or singing and, and praising far right, I would encourage you to link into Radio Anu. That is the international flavor, that is the universal spice. Of course, you know how to get there. It's priestisaacinstitute.com, priestisaacinstitute.com. And of course, the link is in the description below this video here. You just scroll down and press it and there you go. And of course, let me just remind you one more time, well, at least one more time for this video here. We are speaking about the Spring Equinox 2022, Spring Equinox 2022. And those of you who are not going to be with us in the land, of course, we are still encouraging you to be with us virtually. And of course, it will be three back-to-back -back massive days, two hikes, and of course, the cannabis tour and the chalice talk, only $100, my family. And of course, you know exactly what to do to contact us and make sure you get your ticket. You can call or WhatsApp the numbers you see there about. Rastafara Experience Antigua, as well as the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And of course, email address, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com and, and, and reserve your spot. I mean, the time is now, eh? Of course, the first hike is the 20th. That is a Sunday, the 20th. And of course, the second hike will be the 22nd, right in the smack center of the equinox itself. That will be the morning meditation hike. And of course, the day in between, which is the 21st, that is the cannabis tour. That is the chalice talk. That is where you're going to see the different um, levels of marijuana cultivation that is taking place right here in Anu. So I'm looking forward for your presence with us. And let me remind you again, we are definitely talking about this, uh, this Wednesday. Yeah, a mentor journey through the underworld. Yes, that's a mentor journey through the underworld. That is Wednesday, the 16th of March. Looking forward uh, to your presence for your presence with us. That will be 8 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time, which is a 7 p.m. Eastern standard time. And of course, you know, this is an online lecture. Journey through the underworld, man. Wonderful vibration. This is going to be somewhat of a a, 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 a reason in a presentation on the theology of the Lent, the theology that we as Bobo Shanti, you know, speak of, of the Lent. And I mean, it's going to be a high vibes, man. No, probably enough meditation. It may be a little lengthy, you know, but hey, that's what it's all about for us to get the vibes out the way we want to get it out. That's how we got to go. So we give thanks for your presence with us, family. As I said, make sure you tune into Radio Anu and keep the Sabbath meditation up. Life given the keeper of life. Give thanks for all ones who are sitting in and supping in. Looking forward to your presence on, 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 on a Sunday morning for Kidemi. Yeah, your Sunday morning's cup of tea. Radio Anu. Give thanks. Life given the keeper of life. Holy Emmanuel. Salasia. Ja. Rastafari. Blessed love.